and we're back with another stream i hope my recording is already live uh it usually has a delay to youtube but my welcome everyone live. to uh, another stream i'm very happy that blind ray is already in the house today another stream with just me simon and react native and we're gonna do some interesting things today we're gonna get really deep into the expo router before we do that i'd like to say hello good afternoon grab a cup of coffee because this might take a bit longer to explore all the different parts of expo router that we can use and i know that people were kind of confused about this so if you got any questions please leave them in the chat use the chat there is a chat in the live stream if you tune in otherwise you can afterwards leave a comment uh thanks for the hearts let me know where you're tuning in from i'm just gonna quickly pose that we're live uh on the favorite platform do you already call it x i still call it twitter i don't know i, I just don't get used to x i really i don't know uh join us live with all your questions about expo router um by the way we're using expo router version 2. we're using expo router version 2. uh there is already a re uh, request for comments for expo router version 3 which i think evan posted the other week so we can uh, quickly check that out as well. That might be interesting. So introducing no, that is introducing Expo Router version two. We already got enough problems with version two, so let's directly hop into version three. <laughs> uh, where is it? You shared that the other day. Mm, there it is. So this is going to be interesting. Uh, this is like the future of uh, Expo routing. Uh, we're gonna just quickly talk about this, and I'm really looking forward to this here. API routes inside the Expo router? Hmm? That's crazy. Um, but yeah, apparently it's becoming a reality. I mean, yeah, web, Android, iOS, that's of course the thing we want to do with Expo router, but they're really working on API routes. Now, API routes inside a native app, that's always like, uh, uh, how can that work? How does it actually work? I mean, they're not really working inside your native app. like. These API routes will have, like the whole app will have a static export and then you put that static export somewhere where you can have like cloud functions or edge functions and they will serve your API routes. But you can have it in the same project, which is going to be really, really amazing as far as I think. So I think this is going to be really, really great. I also wanted to give you a quick preview of what we are building today. So especially if you tune in later, that always makes sense to uh, give the people an idea of what we're about to do. So, if this could become a bit bigger, thank you. Uh, this is the application we are building. And by the way, while I explain this, say hello in the chat. Let me know where you're tuning in from. I already see the chat becoming very active. So, give a little hello from where you tune in. I'm from Germany, by the way. Um, so, we are building this application, which won't win an award for beauty. <laughs> I'm really sorry, it won't. But it will show you all the necessary concepts and the different concepts of Expo file-based routing. We're gonna start easy, you know, the login. Imagine a login form, imagine the registration area. We all know it, it pushes a page forward. So we're gonna talk about stack navigation. Then we're of course, at some point gonna integrate a modal because it's just too easy to have something like this here for iOS. Then after the login, we of course move forward into an inside area. So it's important that we can't just easily go back. I'm gonna take care of that. So no swipe to go back to the login as I always uh, talked about in my app reviews. As you can see, this inside area will for uh, the beginning feature a tab bar at the bottom with three tabs. We will then talk about how we can go from one tab into the details page in a tab. So see, this tab is still active. We're gonna talk about how to actually pass some parameters to those pages like over 9,000, or how we could open a page and now notice difference. Like normally if I go into the details, I have this tab bar, but if I go into this one, there's no tab bar. So there's a difference. Sometimes you wanna have something that covers the whole screen. Sometimes you wanna have something that lives inside the tab bar. Okay, that's the next part. Then we're gonna talk about a draw navigation. Yes, we can easily nest this in our tab bar. So we see we have this drawer. And we also have the second draw page here. We're going to talk a bit about how we can affect the names and, and the stuff. But usually that's more like React Navigation, which you probably already know about. 
Then we also have this tab. Actually, don't know why we have that tab. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I don't know why I added that one. It like it has no purpose in here at all. <laughs> we can, I mean, we can probably get rid of that tab. It's just a, it's a, just a funny tab to have. But now the important part: um, what we're going to do will also work on the web because Expo Router we can also have a web preview, and hopefully this now works. Um, I should have brought this up previously, but here we go. So this is the same application. Of course, it has no great styling for the web, but it will work exactly on the web as well. We're going to have all of these things. Yes, in this screen, we're going to have a tab bar. And remember how we had that sidebar on our three uh, tab, which is the second tab. Yeah, remember that, that sidebar. On the web, there's actually not a draw menu. On the web, we're going to have this custom setup, which is using actually CSS. So this is using real CSS and we're going to have hover ill. <laughs> yeah, that, that really like I almost broke my leg and arm to get the hover uh, effect working. That was that was a hard one. Um, so yeah, this is expo for the web and apparently it's going to work just like our draw did before. And of course, my details pages and all the other pages are working fine. So that means we are essentially developing a universal application with the Expo Router in this stream. That is the plan. I see five people already left after I announced it. So uh, <laughs> thank you for tuning in. It was a short adventure. Um, Caleb, by the way, the window looks cut off. Yeah, I think I need to position this correctly. Um, yeah, yeah, I gotta uh, have to position all the elements correctly. Uh, once we start the coding, which we're going to do in a second. Uh, let's put this here. I should like save my my layout or maybe... Yeah, I should have a button like to toggle myself. That's something I got to implement for the next stream, like to toggle my view down here. Uh, that box, that would make sense. All right. Uh, having issue with Expo Router in test flight, David. Ooh, why is that the case? I would be curious. Do you use React Native app or Expo app with Expo Router? Um, mm. So for the Expo Router to work correctly, you can't use, as far as I know, or as far as I understand, Cedric, uh, you can't use the uh, exp the bare CLI because the Expo CLI adds some cool stuff that you need for the Expo Router to work correctly. I like your videos, especially the videos about Ionic. Wesley, yeah, I'm, I'm planning some more Ionic videos uh, in the next time uh, as well. I want to do a live stream, maybe something with AI. I haven't found the perfect topic yet, but there will be a stream or a video about this as well. Also, I think next week, let me look my content calendar. Uh, next week will be a video about capacitor background locations. You're going to love that. Uh, something went wrong. Retry screen when trying to replace route. Oh, that's David again. Um, yeah, we're gonna do something with replacing routes definitely in this live stream. Mm. Flo saying hi, it seems like Next.js. Yeah, that's something people still recommend. Um, like, even the Expo team is to some degree recommending the setup with uh, an Expo mono repository and then shared routes. And there are different ways to achieve all of this. Um, so. Uh, that's going to be interesting. I just want to say uh, I'm the creator of galaxies.dev So if you're new to this channel go check it out galaxies.dev where you can also become an expert react native developer The course library is ever growing not just basic courses, but also courses about notifications push SQLite, Tushtan, Tinstack query, Firebase Reanimated we pretty much got uh, a lot of the important stuff already in here and more is coming every week and month um Finally, David, hello from Tbilisi. Hello from there. <laughs> hello from the Czech Republic. Uh, you can now use source app directory to collect all of your source code in one place. This is why I was asking. Uh, did I say that? Uh, did I say that? Yeah, we're gonna definitely use the Expo Router. By the way, let's get started. Uh, we got 10 minutes in, so we got a lot to do today. I want to intentionally do something different, not to... Um, not to make you like scared, but we usually use the Expo Router tabs template. So in most of the streams or tutorials, I'm using this one. And I think it's a great way to get file-based routing started. But there are a lot of files that I usually remove. And I just want to show you how quickly we can actually spin up something without uh, having that integrated. Because it's really not that hard. 
So let me put this a bit to the side here. And then I will start. I will actually use bun because it's faster. You can use, just use npx. Whenever I use bun x, just use npx. It's more like, well, it's not, not a joke, but it's just faster. So I'm going ahead with bun x, create expo, tabs routing. Uh, otherwise you would use npx create expo dash app. So for bun x, they change this. As you can see, this is a lot faster. Um, so I will open this up with code and now I just need to position this in a nice way for you. Uh, let's use all the space. Uh, let's zoom in at least maybe five times. Maybe five times today. Oh, this is going to hurt my eyes. Oh, I have an idea. I have a good idea. I'm going under workspace and zoom in. So I have now nah, like this. Okay, so if I want to manually use the Expo Router version 2, um, I'm going to install a bunch of different dependencies. So let's do this. And as I said, I'm using bun. So I will run bun x expo install. Uh, Expo router, React Native safe area contact, React Native screens, Expo linking, Expo constants. Do I need Expo constants? Expo status bar, React Native gesture handler. I'm not completely sure if I need all of this, but let's go with this. Level five, great for Ray, not at all, not at all. <laughs> yeah, I guess I need to go to a level, I don't know, yeah. But then I can't write anymore, I'm sorry. I do my best to, to keep talking about what I've write. Mm. Okay, so how can we make, um, so first of all, I'm going to kill what we had before here. So I don't want that anymore. I want to have this application now. Um, so, okay, yeah, we had that open before. Uh, once we got that, we need to set up the entry point. So inside of our package JSON, I'm going to add a main XP expo router entry. Uh, which is currently something else, so I'm going to replace that. Uh, modify your project configuration. Add a scheme to your app config. So open the app JSON and add a scheme. Thanks for subscribing. If you, I don't sometimes don't know if the people who are subscribing are actually like in the stream or just in general um, subscribing. I don't like that. Do you like that one? Yeah. So we got the scheme. Uh, hello from the Canary Islands. Welcome to the streams. Um, and yes, authentication with Expo Router. I'm gonna do this uh, in another tutorial and upcoming video again, or in a stream when we use Firebase. Um, then we also want to install the web stuff. As I've shown, we wanna build for the web. So BunX, Expo install, React Native Web, and React DOM. Okay, anything else in here? Okay, enable under web the bundler. So let's go back to the app JSON. Under web, we're gonna add bundler metro. Now, what I wanna do as well is I wanna have typed routes. Uh, oh, sorry, we first need to do this one here. To the Babel config. So in my Babel config, actually I should also use reanimated in here. So to set up everything, I'm gonna use Expo Router Babel and React Native reanimated plugin. But the important part is that I wanna use typed routes Mm, so there was a link, I think, to this. Uh, initially, that was set to true. Now it was false. So under experiments, I can set in the app JSON uh, type routes to true. That will just give us some nice code completion in our files. And with that in place, we can safely remove the app TSX and create a new file at app index.tsx. Uh, call this page and say hello world as always and let's go bun x expo so bringing up expo pressing i for the ios simulator and if we did everything correct we <laughs> of course we didn't of course we didn't um <laughs> how did i do that uh what's what's your problem uh, the, the, the cannot find module React Native. Oh, reanimated. Oh, the good old reanimated bug. So for reanimated, we usually have to run expo start dash c to clear the cache. I was hoping that it just works if I run it the first time, but apparently not. Apparently not. Uh, sorry. Oh, did I actually install the reanimated plugin, or did I only add it to my Babel config? 
Oh yeah, I only added it to my Babel config. I thought I had added it at some point. Um, oh yeah, I, I used this for a later part. Well, while we are here, let's do this. Come on, let's let's wrap up all the installation stuff, and then I'm gonna show you uh, one more screen uh, with all the installs. So later on, we're gonna use the React Navigation Draw component, and therefore I will now already install the draw, the gesture handler, and reanimate it. And to just show you everything in one screen, let me show this so you can take like a screenshot. Let's do a new file. Start does as H. I'm probably gonna put this up on GitHub as well. Oh, this is so much. Okay, so as you can see, we are creating the app. We're installing a bunch of things. Uh, we install what the web stuff and we install the draw and reanimate it. We actually have the gesture handler twice. Um, probably we need it not in both cases. Alrighty then, let's do the fun again. Bun works with React Native? Of course it does. Yeah, it works great. Uh, and actually it's really fast. So that's why I'm using it because I constantly bring up new projects and um, it, it just really, it's, it's for me, it's faster. So let's pray and hope that I finally got something to show, uh, because I, I like I preached that the setup of file-based routing is that easy. Yeah, here we go. Finally, finally a success. There we go. Hello world. We're rendering our first page. That means we have now file-based routing set up successfully in our app. And I just wanted to show this because. You, you don't always need the tabs template or you may be like intimidated by all the things you get from the tabs template So we've now covered the like four or five steps to manually go in an expo app to this just start with a TypeScript template and then add uh, file based routing All right, let me take a sip of coffee because now the the actual work begins mm. Ah that beat Ah, let's tune this up just Let's do a Huberman breath together. Two inhales through the nose, one long, one slow, and then you gotta exhale through your mouth. <sighs> All right, now everyone's calmed down and we are ready for the next step, uh, which is adding our page here. Um, I will, in fact, what, what am I gonna do? Where's my, uh, I don't wanna do this, yes. Uh, I want to add a registration page. So our index file is like the slash file. I'm going to also open with a press on W my web browser. That should open at 8081. Oh, why not? Okay, so hello world, here we go on the web as well. So we're going to uh, like periodically uh, bring in this, this web view again to check it out. So the index page could be your uh, login page now. Just assume this is my login. Maybe we're gonna uh, also add now a stack layout and we do this by adding underscore layout file to our folder. In this very first layout file, I just want to export a stack layout. By the way, the name here doesn't really matter that I'm using. So I'm going to replace this and use the stack from Expo Router. If I don't do anything else, I immediately get this set up. So it's picking up all the files that we have in this folder for our stack layout. That's the first part. But usually you want to like somehow customize that. So then you can get out with stack.screen. Name is the name of your route. In my case, that would be index. And I could have some options. So I could have like a title block in here. Now let me find the right closing brackets and then close the stack. And boom, we do have a login screen up here. That's also the place where I could um, change the color. Uh, let's tune that down a bit. Um, what else? Oh yeah, we wanted to go to the next page. So that is the simple navigation inside of a stack. That's basically like pushing another stack onto your page. I'm going to create the register TSX. Uh, let's call this page. Uh, register users in here. And now we can go to that page uh, by different in different ways. We can use a hook. So we can grab the router using use router 
uh, from Expo Router. And then I could spin up a button from React Native and on press I could call router dot uh, push and now we should get this is the completion we enabled with typed routes so now this is constantly like expo is now constantly scanning our app folder and it recognizes that we have these routes available actually just slash and register so that just makes it a bit easier and I can set title open register that would be one way and it just pushes my page and of course I have the usual swipe to go back stuff uh, that works. Another way is to use the link component which is uh, in my case usually a bit cooler. So you can add the link from Expo Router Then we have the same fun. We have an href and we have the route here register and I can put in uh, what am I going to put in? Mm, actually I'm going to put in a button as well. We'll just do it without the uh, on press with link. So uh, you see, it's not yet working. Why is it not yet working? That's actually a good question. Um, but usually, if you wrap another component with the link, you're gonna add as child. As you see, that also fixes uh, the styling problem we just had. And now I can go to my register page in both ways. One is just like you can use this easier from code. Link can just be used in, in all the places. Uh, it just makes it a bit easier. Ooh. While we are on this page, mm, now let's do this later. I have planned this for later and I, I usually stick to my plan. So this is stack navigation. Nothing special. I mean, uh, there's, there's not a lot you can do wrong with stack navigation. It usually gets more complicated once you get into a tab bar. And that's what we're gonna do now. So let's create a new folder. If I put brackets around my folder, they usually don't appear in the URL. So let me show you. I add uh, the one TSX uh, page and I say tab one. Um, how can I go there? I can just add a link. And I say open login. Uh, no, open or just say login. So that would be what happens after a user logs in in your application. And you can now go to tabs slash one. And let's see. This would push the tabs one page. But, and I hope this is right. I should also be able to simply call slash one and omit the tab stuff and it would still go here. Um, also in the browser, so open register works, open register with link works and login, as you can see, it's probably hard to see, but there's just slash one right now. If I add uh, slash tabs one, let's see what's happening. Mm. Yeah, it would still remove this. So these groups are simply to group uh, stuff together. Usually a draw layout, a tabs layout, or a group of helpful things. And you just want to have some kind of structure in your file-based routing. So in my case, I will add a one and a two to TSX. So we will actually just use two pages in my tab bar. Now, how can we transform those two into an actual tab bar? Because currently we're just pushing this and I, instead I don't want this. I don't want to push this. Um, oh, that's interesting. Now I have no, oh yes, yeah, so you can still swipe to go back. So I really don't want swipe to go back. Um, and therefore I don't want to push because the default, if we use an href, the default is going to be pushing that route. We will specify replace just push replace and that will push that page but oh yeah that was smart of me <laughs> now i can't go back anymore really smart move simon really really smart um okay so i can go to the inside area i should probably on my uh, first page uh add something so i can go back uh -huh. let's go here and let's put in a link. I can actually copy this from my index because I'm lazy. So I'm gonna call this logout. Add all the missing imports. And this will just bring me back to slash replace. So let's see. Okay, 
So we can move to the inside area, which is not yet a tab bar, but we can already uh, move out again. That works good. Now let's transform our two pages by simply adding a new layout file next to it. So the layout file next to the pages basically defines their layout. Well, that's that's why they're called layout, huh? Mm. Uh -huh. So in the tabs page, we can do the same like we did previously, where we just had the simple stack and we can just have a simple tabs element. This will pick up different files in the tabs folder. Um, let's do a little refresh here. That's probably messing this up. And log in. Okie dokie. So what do we see? Um, probably I'm going to show you this in a bit bigger way here. Uh -huh. Oh, come on, Xcode and simulator and whatnot. I'm still behind. Um, so we do have our tab bar down here. You see, I can switch between the tabs. I am what I am. I can go back here and I can go back in. That's usually good. But what happens is that we have outside uh, stack layout and inside we have the tabs layout, which also have, has the default header. So one of these should not be displayed. And usually it's this one because this one and two that's actually the right header. That's the header we want to see. That's the header of those pages, but we don't want this one up here. So let's get rid of that. Um, I probably can keep it also a, a bit bigger because like you don't have to see the tab bar at the bottom. It's not like super important. Um, so in order to remove that, we will go back to the top layout and say that we don't want that header for the tabs screen. So here in my top layout, I will add another stack.screen. The name this time is the path to our tab bar, which is just this group tabs. And for the options, I'm specify header shown false. Okay, close that and whoosh, we're gone. Okay, one, two, lock out. Lock in header, register header, everything's still fine. We simply disabled the header for the layout of the tab bar. Good, that's a good start. Now, with that in place, uh, why do we continue? Um, of course, for the tab bar, we have the same stuff we can do for uh, the stack layout. So I can now go ahead. The first one was, I think, one. So that was tab number one. Uh, and I can have some, is it tab bar? What is? Oh, you're mad about something. I can see it. Uh, so tab screen, name one, options, um, tab bar, what's it, label, uh, home. And okay, yeah, that's great. Now this should turn to home. And we can do the same for our second tab. Uh, that was two and we can give it the label like profile and then you can also define all the fun like uh, What is it the icon tab bar icon? So for the tab bar icon define whatever you want uh, Ionicons usually works good So Ionicon. Oh, come on Ionicons <sighs> Expo Can you just like expo vector icons? Oh, come on uh, Ionic, uh, is it like Ionicons from Expo? Where are the Expo vector icons? Did I not install them? Uh, I probably did not install them. Uh, let's see, Expo vector icons. Uh, there should be add Expo. Vector icons. Yeah, that's the place. Come on, you had it all along. Uh, then we got home, and then you can do whatever you want. So that should give us a nice little home page. Actually, on the web, we can see it even better. So now we got that home button here, and we also have a tab bar on the web, which is probably not the coolest, but we're going to talk about that stuff and, and, and web specific layouts later. Is everything so far clear? Uh, we're at 30 minutes. I hope you're still with me. Um, you're very silent. I assume you're, you're following closely or just listening with one ear. Let me know in the chat if everything's okay for you. <laughs> Ooh. 
Actually, I had a big cup of coffee, so that lasted for 30 minutes today. It was kind of good. Following Francis, thank you. That's it, that's the spirit. Oh, it's getting warm in here uh, and I'm at I'm at point. Okay, I, I prepared an outline which has about 14, 15 elements. And I think we're at we're at four now. <laughs> so I uh, got to move on a bit here. Um, but I'm ready. I hope you're ready as well. Okay, um, we have the icons. Uh, that icon only has the wrong size. I think you can get like, is it like this? Uh, size, color, you can extract the color here and the size and then you can apply this size, color and as a result the icons actually have the right size also in our application uh, and switch their color accordingly. So this is the place where you can do all the, the fine tuning um, for your icons screens. How did we get that? I, I think there was another reason why I got here. No? No other reason? Well, well, <laughs> let's do one here just for the fun. Uh, oh no, we don't have a profile icon. Uh, what's it called? Like body? No, person. I think person. Yeah, it's person. It makes a makes a big difference here. At least on the web, you should see my person icon. That's actually a nice preview. Really, we should just really keep the web preview and just develop on the web. It's not too bad. Uh, also, everything here should just be fine. We have not messed up anything yet. Um, okay, what was the next thing? I think the next part was a details page. Yeah, let's do a details page. That's interesting. So on my screen, on my tab one, on the home tab, whatever you want to call it, I want to go into the details. I want to go into the details in that tab. So I will keep up the tab. Remember, we have the difference between like showing a full page and just showing one uh, inside. So that means our page one needs its own stack layout. This is an important part. If you just want to use like the overall stack layout, you could just push this above and we just cover the page. But if you want to really have like a stack history in that one tab, we're gonna have to implement our own layout for that uh, page. So what we're doing now is we create another folder for our page one. Actually, we could call it, we could potentially just call it one. Uh, um, Oh, I'm gonna have to figure this out. Let's just call it one without the, the thing. We're gonna see on the web. And I will copy my one page into this. Now, as it's already the one folder, it needs to become the index file. Also, at the same time, this route, I think the route will actually still work fine. I think it will still work fine. But in my one folder, I will add a new file, details.tsx. So that's a page, details page. And if I now want to go from my index page here, from page one, uh, oh no, it's, now it's starting. Now we get the, the first errors. That is good, that's good. Uh, that was to be expected actually. We get the first error because there's no layout route name one exists. Uh, that's coming from our tabs layout where we currently defined this, go away. Go away, ah, go away. Uh, well, we already defined this. So I think, I don't, I'm not exactly sure, but maybe we can change this to one index. Okay, yeah, not too bad. So now our one index works again. You can change the header to whatever you want, but it appears again in here. Let's see. If I now add another link in here and I wanna go to tabs one, uh, no, actually, I want to go to tabs one details. Open details. Uh, I don't want to replace this time. So it will just instantly open this page. And it opens this page in a crazy way that we have this third tab down here, which we definitely don't want to have. Now, there are actually multiple ways how we can get rid of that tab. But the correct way to get rid of it in this case is to implement our own layout file here in this folder. Okay, so this layout file will now 
again use the stick okay everything else is gone let's see we'll reload this let's see open login okay layout chain no route name one index exists okay i think this is uh actually there is a one uh index file i should have probably just grouped it together Nesta children one two yeah okay I see what you're doing there is it is it that bug okay yeah so once you do the new layout file in this subfolder here you see there came up a problem uh, that the pad suddenly was incorrect so that is a bit like something that's probably not working perfect yet in terms of the error messages because we could use the name one slash index before and once we add the layout file we can't use it anymore now it's just become one again so these are like the small things that people usually complain about they're not very well documented um so um but i hope this video now gave you an idea about that but what we see as well is that we have the same problem with the header area again right but this time we should know what to do. So for that one screen, I will say header shown false and then the header disappears. And I can go to the details page and notice, we're gonna do this in a bit bigger way here. Notice how I stay within this active tab. So I can now go to profile and then I can go to home and it keeps the history. The history of that tab is still active because it has its own stack routing. Okay, there we go. And we can, of course, still log out. Ooh, that log out. That log out kind of confused me now. Um, log out. Probably I should hit save. Ooh, that log out is not really taking me where it should take me. That's crazy. Uh, log in. Interesting. Why is the lockout now not bringing me back there? I mean, I still, I, I keep staying in the one. Huh, that's crazy. Uh, that's interesting. Actually, that never happened to me before. I had the perfect flow set up, uh, but I also used brackets around the one folder. So that is interesting. What is the app that you use? Uh, let me quickly think about this. Mm, name one, two, header shown faults. Open details up until here. Everything is just cool. But once I do the lockout on the index page, I mean, it has now the same name, but there's only one index page. Yeah, that should also be like, I mean, there's always this cool little thing here. Um, but this is definitely not correct. Replace. We have replace. Huh. That's strange. I wish Evan was here in the chat and let me know what's wrong. So let me try one thing that I did previously. So what I previously did, uh, or let me first look on the web. So on the web, this would go to one slash details. That's cool. Uh, and the lockout test is also not working very well anymore. Um, why are you not doing anything? Hmm. It's like, um, I feel like this lockout is just, just navigating to the index here like the relative thing again but it should work at the top level so i don't know why it's absolute path to the route eg feed slash hot replace as child um i'm not sure i'm going to try something let's try this uh, i will change this to one in brackets that will probably mess up everything again because that means I need to use brackets here. And 
Oh, this is specifically when I click lock in going there. Maybe that was the problem all along. A lot of interesting things happening. So the Expo router is um, funny all the time. At least that works again. <laughs> oh, actually it's not. No, I broke my whole layout. All right, so you also get a witness. I'm debugging the Expo router. I was hoping that we could prevent this this time. <laughs> and I had a really good preparation, but I figured out uh, how to mess this up. So tap screen and this is our tabs routing this is now also one um, so now i should be able to go to the details but the lockout is still completely messed up and i wonder why um so name index this is a stack screen and then i have the tabs in here um, it's the only difference I have in my own code that I did before. That's funny. That's really interesting. Uh, but we can figure that out. That's not a big problem. Um, what else I wanted to show you while we are here is that if you add another page in here in the tabs folder, for whatever reason, all these pages will come up. Like if I add a hidden TSX, and add a page, it will automatically appear here in the tab bar routing. And sometimes you don't want that. So in order to fix that problem, you can set the href of that to null. So in my tabs routing, I could have a tabs um, and say for the href hidden and voila, it is removed again. So I still don't know why we're on the details page now okay let's figure that out so the layout here should be just fine for our one page the index page actually this should not have an index page now that I called it like this I'm going to call this wonder.tsx so I think the problem was with the multiple index pages uh, in here so now that pass is correct that pass is right and navigating it should work with just tabs to be honest, it should work, but for the sake of this, uh, let's go directly to tab one. And I think this should now finally solve the problems. Let's do a reload. Lock in, lock out, ooh, finally. Okay, so having another index file in that folder was not a good idea, uh, actually. It kind of messed up my routing. I'll definitely come back to that later. I'm going to make a mental note or you probably can remember this and remind me about it at the end. So let's recap. We have a login. We have a registration page. We can log in. We have an inside tab bar area. We can't go back because we use replace and we can go to the details of one tab. Now I also want to pass data to that details page. How can we do that? Well, that's actually pretty easy. In the, this folder, I'm adding something using the brackets here. So this is a placeholder that we can then access on that page. And we can get this by using const. Um, so we destructure this to grab the ID and we use use local search params. You can actually add typings if you want to, like ID string in here. Mm. Close it. Okay, and now I've used every letter that's possible. And then you can say hi ID. So let's add a link to this on my one page. I then have the link to the details page. Let's add two more. I will go to 42 and 1337. Uh -huh. <laughs> and let's see. Why am I constantly on the details page? <laughs> Uh, tab one, one. Uh, I feel like somebody brought us here into the wrong place. Mm, for my tab screen, for tabs one. 
Okay, here we go. Here I am, open details, still works. Open details 42, opens that page. I should probably make the text a bit bigger. Um, font size, I don't know, 28. So now you can see it better. So we're on that page and I can pass data to that page. Uh, Red says, I think the problem was with the one index is the first match when route. Yeah, that is definitely true. Yeah, if we look at that folder structure, it was the first page here because those are just groups, but it was like the one index. Um, if I if I hadn't used brackets around this, I mean, I use... We were gonna come back to that in the end. Uh, then we can try and mess up another page, but I just wanted to like go through all the other things uh, so we can... Mm. All right, so we have the details page. We're able to pass data, we can hide a bar. Now, uh, let's quickly cover how you can also add a modal page. A modal page is actually pretty boring. It's really, it's that boring. Let me just add it here. So this is my modal page. And if I want to present something as a modal page, the only thing we have to do is in my layout, I will add another stack.screen name, in this case, modal options. Uh, presentation and then you're gonna see there are a few things card contained modal contained transparent modal form sheet full screen modal so just go ahead with modal and then add a link to call this somewhere I'm just going to add this uh, now I'm constantly on this page why am I always on the de stuck on that details page I really don't want to be stuck on that page can I set for my stack like uh, screen options? Something like default or initial page? I thought that was like uh, something we could set up. Or for the tabs, was it for the tabs? Yeah, we can set up initial tab, but that won't really help, right? Uh, screen options. Tab bar. Uh, active. Let's not do this. Let's not. But it's still curious that we go to that page uh, all the time. So if I know, okay, that's going to be different. What, what happens now? If I hit save? No, we on that fade. I'm fine. I'm fine. I wanted to open that modal page. So that's the code here. Add another link. This one will try to open the modal, the model. And then we change this to open mole. And voila, there we got it. So you can put this wherever you want in your application. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you could also have like, um, oh yeah, that's actually a good place to talk about pages that you can open from everywhere. So let's say you have like a, like some pages you need to open from everywhere. Let's call these auxiliary routes, aux. And then I will add like uh, disclaimer.tsx. So this page, and this is like the disclaimer. I want to open this from everywhere and I want it to be across the whole application. So not within my tab bar. That means I will add this or I can add this. Do I actually have to add this anywhere? I don't think so. I think it should be picked up uh, by our layout file. So let's try in my tab, another button, aux slash disclaimer, uh, open disclaimer. And then we see it covers the whole screen. So instead of the details page, which is using that internal stack navigation of that page, we're now using the the above stack navigation, like at the top level here, which has also a stack navigation. So whenever you have like stacks, tabs combined, you just need to think about on, on which level you currently are and what should be above what. That's pretty much all you have to figure out. Uh, it's usually causing some confusions with the expo router. Okay, so we have a lot of routing. We have the tab bar, uh, we can replace, we can go back. Uh, I don't want to call this logout test anymore. This should really just be the logout. Uh, we have a modal, we have a disclaimer. Um, I think at this point we're ready to do the draw navigation. Mm, let's actually introduce another tab. 
I will call this three. Very creative, I know. We could probably call this draw. So three. Uh, if we want to create a draw navigation, guess what? We're gonna have to need a new layout file. Let's directly start with that. Um, question was how to send object and router to another page. That's, that's a problem because if you deploy this to the web, think about objects that are passed here in that URL. That's going to be really, really challenging. You don't really want to pass like a base64 stuff in the URL. Um, so if you have this file-based routing, you usually want to pass around IDs. And you can still, in your code, in memory, share the state. Like you can use Zustand or whatever, uh, a provider or context to share objects. But with the file-based routing, you usually just pass like small strings and stuff. You can stringify parameters, that would work as well. But I, like, I recommend not to stringify a whole user object in the URL. Um, okay, where did I left off? Uh, okay, I wanted to do uh, this thing here. <laughs> this draw navigation, that's what it's called. Okay, so I'm gonna have a page one and page two in here. Page one at TSX. Page and that's like draw one, and then we're gonna have another one. Page two dot TSX. This is going to be draw two. So now we just need to do the layout again, and this will be the draw. Remember, if you want to use a draw component, um, actually we should be able to import this from Expo Router. Uh, if you use that, you have to install the packages that we uh, added at the beginning. So if you're just tuning in now for the draw, you're gonna have to install a React Navigation draw and the gesture handler and reanimate it and set that up. So if you're tuning in now, go back to the beginning uh, where we included all of that. So this is my draw now. Uh, let's see, I actually don't know. Okay, I got the tab three. And I just got the draw. The only thing that's messed up is again that for tab three it shows the header up here. So we can get rid of that by going into the tab layout. And for the tab three, we will simply say, hey, please don't show a header. And with that, we have a draw inside of our tab bar. <laughs> Life can be that easy with the Expo route, really. And also the whole stuff should work on the web. I mean, you I don't know if you wanna really wanna have a draw on the web, you probably won't. So we're gonna talk about that in a second. Um, but it would work, it would work. Um, I was just, oh no, yeah, all cool. All good, all good, we're good, we're good. So, we got the draw. Uh, let's quickly talk about how you can uh, customize that stuff. So for example here, these are automatically created, but you can do something about that. I think I have a course in uh, on Galaxies where I show how to like customize and build your own list inside of that draw component. It's actually more complicated than I would think, but at the same time, it's also not too complicated. And of course, the setup here is the same. If you wanna customize the files, like if I want to have something custom for my page one or page two, I will use draw.screen, use the right name of that file. So let's say page one and page one should have specific options. Uh, header title should be uh, whatever my news feed. And then we have the draw label. It should be like news. So as a result, we get an error. <laughs> Always good. Um, as a result, layout channel, uh, your page one, please. So we see news is up here. Uh, so that's the draw label comes up here. And on that page, I have news feed. So my news feed, my news feed is the header title. And with that, we have also uh, integrated a draw navigation. That was really, that was quite fast. Um, uh, yeah, actually I have the, yeah, I have the, some code. So this is some code from the uh, course on galaxies, which is using a custom draw content. 
So you can pass this into the drawer and then have a custom drawer uh, content scroll view and item list. And that's basically how you do it if you want to customize that drawer. I think it looks cool out of the box and you can style stuff. So sometimes that's already enough. Uh, but in other cases, uh, there's that. Okay, I think um, we have actually covered most of the native stuff. So we have a login, we have stacks, we have modals, we can cover the whole screen, we have a tab bar and we have a draw component. And everything beyond that is just like mixing these layouts in the right way, in the right folders and structuring them correctly. For the rest of the live stream, we're gonna focus on something else. On, we're gonna see how we can also change the behavior of our expo application on the web so this is becoming really interesting and i need to take a sip before we do that because it's actually quite a long stream uh we're already close to an hour so hope you're still there uh hope you stick with me thank you mike thank you red thank you three omala everyone in here david it's an exciting stream it took me really some time to prepare all of this so uh if you're not yet subscribed make sure you subscribe to the channel there's a lot coming over the next time. Okay, break's over. <laughs> Back to this. What is this music? It sounds like, oh no. Something I will listen to late at night. Although I'm not awake late at night. I go to bed 9 p.m. Um, is this... L yeah, whatever. We're gonna listen to some lo-fi. Yeah, okay. That's a good, good swag for what we want to do next. Um, we're gonna start. We're gonna start by using platform specific modules. Whew, that's going to be interesting. I hope we can pull it off. Thank you, Wesley. Thank you, Milorad. Uh, everyone in there. So, this is my web preview of this application. And I don't really like that I have this sidebar thing going on here. Um, so, what I will do is in my layout here for the uh, so that is the layout file of three and that is the draw component in that file i would say uh, that if we're on the web platform uh, platform os equals web we will return something else we will not use a draw only in the other case i will return a draw Okay, so in the case of web, I will return, um, what do I want to return? I want to return a div element um, and probably span WTF. <laughs> you see, we are on the web having this WTF. We are not having this. On the mobile app, all good, all good. We have the draw and on the web, we have freedom. We have unlimited freedom. So let's do something here. Uh, I prepared some code. Uh, we can use style. We can actually use uh, CSS in here as well. But let's start here with a flex one to cover that whole page. Um, then we're going to have a header area. Um, so let me bring this in because I don't want to mess this up. And then I will close the div and close the header area and within i will add two link components so we're going to have the same links that we have on the drawer i just want to have like my drawer one and drawer two so link href will go to uh, slash page one and again i will use as child in here and uh, then we're going to have a pressable for a reason uh, I cannot yet talk about <laughs> and within we're gonna have a text element saying uh, page one okay this is my one link and then I'm gonna have a second one okay and again mobile app not affected by all of these changes because we have that check here but on the web we instead now have this we have a header area and I can change between page one and page two uh, I don't see the content here yet. The problem is that we now also need to render our actual content and we do this by placing a slot in here. So that slot will render the actual content and now it turns up draw one and draw two. And you see, 
this is actually a legit way how you could target web you could even have a tip bar we could do this fun here actually i should have done that maybe uh will i do it uh, maybe maybe not i don't know yeah yes no maybe um i don't want to break my whole app <laughs> uh link doesn't work on web um all good links work by for it as you can see the only thing that uh, didn't really work for me is a hover event so <laughs> that is something that tamagui fixes really well uh and it's apparently really ugly to do this yourself so this is the only solution i came up with um i used a state here uh with hover and a cons handle hover which will set the index of the current element i hover over and to use that I then updated my two link components, or especially the pressable in those components, to have on hover in, it will call handle hover zero, on hover out, it will call it to undefined. As a result, I can now hover over it and it will apply my styling. Do I like that? Mm, not really. <laughs> not really a big fan of that solution. It does work, however. Um, Actually, not too bad, but uh, yeah, it could really drag down like the performance of your application if you do uh, overdo this. So probably something like Tamagui is handling that in a better way. Mm. Also, again, um, all of this. Hello, Prof Kondasper. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. All of that would probably make even more sense uh, in here. So where we have our uh, tabs. What are the tab names? One. Let's check it out. Uh, tabs slash one. Uh, let's do this. Uh, I'm messing up my whole app. Um, else we show a tab bar. I just want to show because the tab bar is definitely something that looks awful on the web. It really looks looks awful. Uh, I will not use the on hover. Uh, one, uh, one, one, and we'll not use this one and not use the hover styling, just making it really easy. So we had like tab one, tab two, mm, what was that actually? Tabs slash, that's the cool thing about these type routes. So tab two, and then yeah, if I go to tab three, we're probably gonna have a problem because that is also trying to do a header bar. Well, let's see. So again, mobile, no changes. We still have the tab bar, but on the web, let's start fresh. And if I log in, uh, I will actually not have, oh, I messed up the styling up there. Do I have the slot? Yeah, I do have the slot, uh, but we definitely have no tab bar anymore at the bottom. And I wonder what that one up there is. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, because I'm on tab one. What was the... Actually, that's good. Got to go now. See you next week. See you next... Uh, actually, I'm going to be on vacation next week, Ray. But hopefully, you're going to be back the week after. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time. Um, so, I don't know what my header bar is doing here. It's definitely not rendering what I want it to render. So I will remove this from the tab bar. But as you can see, this would be the way to have platform specific modules uh, not render a tab bar. So that was certainly something off with the header area. Okay, um, we got that. We also got CSS support. So we can actually have CSS support. We just need to add a metro config like this. So let's place the metro config here in our folder uh, with CSS support enabled. Now, where can we place some CSS? Um, now you'll need to clear the cache. Okay, that's good to know. So I will stop my server and bring it up again. Um, and let's see. This is what I wanted to do. So I want to use CSS. So let me create a file next to probably page one or page two. Uh, it doesn't actually matter. 
style.css. Okay, in that style, uh, I'm going to add some, some random CSS, like a container with a background color, a span, and some, some body stuff. Now, on that page, I should be able to get that. Let's see. Uh, import um, style.css. Uh, this is, oh, this is the draw page. Mm. Uh, okay, yeah, that means we should also have uh, if platform in here. I actually don't know if this works very well now. How did I do this before? I have no idea. I think I used somewhere a diff component. The problem is if I just throw in a diff component here, it will get really mad at me. Uh, test container. So because then the mobile application will say, hey, what are you doing? Like, I don't want to have this. Um, let's see. But let's bring it up and let's see some errors. Although always good to see the actual errors. Oh, I'm compiling really slow. Browsers already? Eh, not yet ready. So global styles are web only. Usage will cause your application to diverge. Let's try here. Yeah, this is going to mess this up. Um, you can use the class name in our component. Okay, let's actually try this one out. But I think uh, this is going to fail here horrible because there's no div. But let's check it out on the web. So on the web, uh, I'm here and I got this. So on the web, it works automatically. Now, there's of course a problem. Now we have one platform working web and one platform completely messed up mobile. Not good, not good idea, not good. So how can we fix this? Well, we should probably not do it like this and just randomly throw in some some CSS into our pages in our uh, Expo router. What we should do instead is probably have some custom code for the different platforms and that will also make our app a lot more structured. Now, uh, as you might know, you can have like uh, page.ios.tsx or dot, uh, Android as a specific file. That does not work with Expo Router in this folder, but the Expo way to do this would be like this. You can have a components folder, and in that components folder, I will define my container.js, first of all. Yeah, it's a JS file. So this will be the default implementation for that draw one page. And now I will go back to my draw one page, which was this one here. And instead of rendering the stuff in here, I will call this. I'm gonna comment this out and put in export default from blah, 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 blah. so the right pass. You could also use like relative routes if you set this up from my components container. And let's see what happens. Did I save everything? Uh, I don't know if this is like reloading or if I, yeah, I added a file. Oh, it works again. Draw one default is showing up. Draw one default is coming up. That is good. So this is my page and now I can edit it in here. So uh, test, you see, this is definitely the page. What we can do uh, now is funny. So I can now create another file next to this and I will call this container.web.js. I tried TS, that did not work very well, um, but probably there will be a fix for that as well. Also, I wanna bring in my style here. I wanna place my style next to this. And for the code of my container web implementation, I can now actually use the funny web stuff. I can use the head component. We're gonna talk about that in a second. And I can use everything I want. I can use H2, I can use class name, I can still use style like before. And with that split in place, and with our expo default using container, on mobile, we're using the default implementation. We could actually have like an iOS special on web, we're also using that. Uh, let's see, is it not yet picking it up? Uh, did I not add it? Uh, container.web.js. Probably 
has not picked up the page correctly. Oh, come on! That was the important moment! Don't do this to me, Expo Router! Why you do this? Ah, uh, come on. That was the whole, the big show. That was your big moment for the web, Expo Router. You destroyed it. Uh, do I have to, like, reload this so it picks up the right files? Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? Um, who knows, please. How about .tsx or j? That is, that is a good question. Um, let me wait until the... Okay, so it was a caching problem. It was a caching problem all along. Uh, okay, let's talk about what we got here. We have a solution. We have both a solution uh, with the different modules like using a if platform web, then please use this styling so you can like define the, the setup, the structure of your page. And we have a solution for using completely custom components for web and mobile. So if I go here, I have everything. I have the site drawer and I have the, the pages here using the stuff from the JS file. And here we're using all the web goodies. Do other file extensions work? That is a good question. Um, let's try. Yeah, the TSX looks good. Um, uh, let's. Let, I'm going to close this one once again and restart it. I probably shouldn't have to clear the cache all the time, um, but I just want to really see. Mm -hmm, there's an action. If that works, that would be pretty cool because I really did not like the JS files. So in that case, thank you, Red. That would be really, really amazing. Let's see. Thank you, Red. That was a good one. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so <laughs> that's even better. So now I can have my own components. I could probably uh, structure this a bit better. What I used in here as well is interesting. I used some head and meter information because if you want to build for the web with Expo Router, you're going to have to think about that part as well. And what happens if we use a component like this, and actually we can use the head component, uh, we can use this in a regular page if we wanted to. So just giving you an example, let's go back to the page two of the drawer. And in here, I could also throw in the head component. So let's call this uh, news to page and meter description, uh, whatever. So on the web, I should be able to see on page one uh, some meter. Let's go in there a bit closer. Uh, title Simon's cool page. Um, description check out Galaxy's Dev. So meta description and tag was rendered on the web correctly if i go to page two uh, we see description whatever okay so we are able to also get like the good good seo stuff uh set up if we want to mm, additionally you can have like a global file for this that is also usually included in the default setup which is the plus.html I'm just going to bring this in. This is the default setup you get where you can define the stuff for your page. So you can have like uh, the default title or things set up, the viewport. Uh, this is always included with the Expo router for uh, file-based routing if you set it up like that. Okay, I think this is actually pretty much everything we wanted to build. We have a universal app. That looks great on native, uses file-based routing, uses tabs, uses a draw, uh, can do everything we want. And we have a way to customize this for the web, for the layouts. We have some sort of solution for the hover events, which is really, really ugly. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and we also are able to actually use CSS in here. Now to wrap this up. Uh, let's do one thing and that is export for the web. 
So for native, of course, we can build with Expo and, and stuff. Let's see how we can do this for the web. In that case, I can just run bunx export, uh, export dash dash platform web. And that should generate a static export of our application that I should be able to hopefully host with something. Let's see. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. All good in here. Okay. Uh, we have a dist folder with an index file. We have some assets, bundle, uh, some static styling. We got some, what is this? Oh, well, I probably don't want to know. Have I used any kind of HTTP? Uh, is it HTTP server dist? Uh, uh, and voila, here's our static export working just like before uh, with everything we have included. And I could now easily throw this into um, whatever kind of hosting, Vercel, Netlify, you name it. Let me try to quickly do this for you to give you an idea uh, of this. Um, so here's my Netlify uh, and I can just drop in a, a folder. Let me open this and I want to drag in my tabs. This is like really the ugliest way to deploy your website. Please don't do this in a real world. But sometimes, sometimes that's okay. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Are you already good? Complete, skipped, skipped, skipped. And our page is live. So this page should be available for everyone to use. We got login, we got the different screens so you can navigate around and see the stuff we have built over the last one and a half hour together. Uh, that should, yes. Everything seems to work just fine on the web. So yes, you can use um, Next.js alongside Expo and then you can use Solito to share your routes and especially use Tamagui which works great for the different platforms. But maybe this is also the future. I really like this approach and if I want to build like a SaaS or a side project in the future, I think I'm going to use the Expo router because it is already pretty good. And as teased in the beginning, with Expo Router version three, we will also have API routes. So that means potentially I will have some, some API folder here. Um, from, I still get this like, have I asked? Uh, right, so uh, as we can see from the screenshot, I will probably have like something plus API where I can do something cool. Um, and within those API functions, I could then see in a safe environment use, for example, yeah, the open API key, um, use open AI or any other uh, stuff that I don't want to use in my app. So even if I use an environment file with Expo, it is not secure. It will be bundled with my front end. But in this case, the API or the environment variables will be bundled only with that server environment and you can make requests to that endpoint. So I can have everything in here, which would be really, really great for a lot of authentication scenarios. Um, so that would make my life definitely a lot easier. I don't know about you. Um, so that should work. Sefgate, can you try to implement safe area on web? What exactly would be the safe area on the web? Uh, I haven't tried that yet. Wouldn't you do it like with CSS and CSS variables and use the environment variables for CSS? I don't think I would use the safe area view on the web. I would probably only use that component for uh, a native app. Um, also just a little plug here at the end. Uh, if you came this far, if you enjoyed this content, you will definitely love what I've created in Galaxies. Um, a lot of courses about interesting topics that you want to check out. So here's the course library again. You can check it out at galaxies.dev. You can actually become a member for free and then upgrade to a pro account 
uh, and get these awesome stars in the background. That's uh, really the greatest thing we got. Uh, I even plan to have like more stars in there. We really need to double down on the on the whole stars theme. So if Brett is watching, uh, we need more stars. We need more galactic stars and, and everything stars in there. Uh, I mean, max width for a page. Um, you, you, you should probably use just like media queries and CSS for that and uh, uh, the, for setting the maximum width of a page. Um, mm -mm, let me check. So for that page, I wonder, that is my draw web. Let's see. Um, this is, I wonder if I can style the body here. I should be able to, right? Uh, background red. Oh, I don't have the live reload. Have I? No, I killed this. Let's quickly bring this up again. Uh, so here we go. Okay, yeah, so we can't just set the body background width. Or is it background color? Nope. Um, uh, we are, yeah, we are on the right page. So that is the page that is rendered for the web. Um, let's see. If I put in class name Simon here and wrap my app inside that, what will happen? That's a good question. So let's see. I will say Simon is like this. I mean, for Simon, I could probably have a max with setup, right? Um, so I could do that and usually I would use a flex layout, uh, display flex and then flex, uh, what is it, justify content center. And also align items center, oops, actually it's not center like this. Um, okay, yeah, I'm really the flex master. <laughs> um, if I just set it up as a width, would it be then? Yeah, well, I'm I'm an idiot at that. But you should definitely be able to do it with CSS. Uh, I have a feeling that if you use media queries, um, it should work. Um, additionally, we're probably gonna do, like, maybe we should do another live stream on actually building a website with... Um, with Expo Router. Let me know in the chat if you're interested in, because usually we focus on, on the native app, which we've built nicely with the draw and the tab navigation, but let me know if you're interested in like building a cool website with uh, Expo Router. Just put a thumbs up or something in the chat. And if you watch this afterwards, um, leave a comment below the video. I think that would be really interesting because yeah, I mean, to be honest, <laughs> This is not a great website. Like this tab bar down here, you definitely don't want to have that on the web. So we would probably have to come up with a custom layout. Maybe we're going to have like a side menu bar uh, or have it at the header. And then, um, yeah, something. Yeah, just something. I, I would have to come some. Okay, Angela website with Expo Router would be cool. Red says thumbs up. Svitsyava says thumbs up. Okay. Looks like this is, might be one of our next streams. Um, maybe if I get to work on this during the cruise, uh, during the vacation next week, uh, then we can do this. And otherwise, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the stream. I enjoyed working with you. Thank you all for your support. Uh, actually, we passed this week a big milestone. We passed 60,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel. It's growing rapidly. Uh, I assume we won't make it to 100k by the end of the year, but I have hope that over the next two years, maybe next three years, we're gonna get to 100k. So that has always been my life dream. Maybe we can finally reach it. All right. Thank you again. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the support. Uh, thanks for helping me out with all the bugs that I encountered. Uh, if you got any problems afterwards, let me know uh, in the comments or check out the Discord channel of Galaxies or find me on Twitter. You're gonna catch me somewhere. I hope you have a great week. Thanks everyone for tuning in. And as always, happy coding. <laughs>